In a recent interview, Calvin Smith of Answers in Genesis criticizes BioLogos for, in Calvin's view, not emphasizing the gospel. He then opines that a literal Adam and Eve is essential to understanding the gospel. Let's take a look. And then I said, do they explain the gospel? And see, when you believe in the story of evolution, what do you do with Adam? Because you don't have a literal Adam and a literal Eve. That kind of falls out of believing that. And so without that literal Adam and Eve, you can't explain the gospel like Paul does. Because Paul starts out, you know, and he, he'll say, well, here's the, go here's the gospel that you received that, I, that I, I taught you. And he gets to the very end and he actually says, Adam and Jesus. That's it. Like this is encapsulation. And I, I go through that. Well, let's take a look at the presentation of the gospel in the passage Calvin cited, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. There is nothing in this presentation of the gospel that requires a literal Adam and Eve. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he was raised. And I don't need there to be a literal Adam to understand that I sin and need a savior. There is nothing more obvious in this world than that I sin and that we all sin. Now what Calvin Smith does is sort of insert Adam into the gospel. How does he do it? Well, in the video, he refers to a blog post he wrote where he uh, explicitly does this. He goes later into the chapter, all the way to verses 21 and 22, which are in the middle of the, of the later paragraph, actually three paragraphs later, and then replaces the gospel with those later verses. Those verses say in the NIV, For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Now, there is nothing wrong in principle with showing two verses that are separated by other verses next to each other in order to frame an issue. But in this case, I don't think the context warrants it. And what it does is replace the actual gospel and insert Adam into the new version. He calls this reference to Adam that he inserts a summary of the gospel. Now, I think AIG is unusual in sticking Adam into the gospel. How do other Christian organizations, including even other conservative ones that AIG would generally be comfortable with, define the gospel? I did a quick web search. Desiring God, John Piper's website, presents the gospel like this. The gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for our sins and rose again, eternally triumphant over his enemies, so that there is now no condemnation for those who believe, but only everlasting joy. That's the gospel. I don't see any mention of Adam in there or anything that requires a literal Adam in order to validate or understand the gospel. What about the Gospel Coalition? From their website, the gospel is the good news of what God in love has done in Jesus Christ, especially in Jesus' cross and resurrection, to deal with our sin and reconcile us to himself. Christ bore our sin on the cross. He bore the penalty, turned aside God's judgment, God's wrath from us, and canceled sin. Again, no mention of or requirement for a literal Adam.